Hello, hello. I'm Miz. This is my channel. I like cry every day. And today I'm going to recap and review the fifth episode of the fourth season of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And of course, we have to start with a trigger warning. This recap and reaction is to everything that we see on camera, and that includes kids and religion. If it's on camera, we're going to talk about it. Let's get started. Today's episode is called The Nastiness and the Rumors. Sounds promising. The rumors and nastiness about her? We open with Meredith and Seth at a restaurant, and I wonder if she is going to pull a jar of caviar out of her purse. But she doesn't. She drones on and on and on and on and on about the Palm Springs trip, about Angie not being invited, how Lisa lost her ring, and she totally acts like a victim regarding the big dinner fight that happened at the end of their trip. It ended with three-year-olds that have cancer, so I don't know what she wanted. We do get a flashback of Angie K's greatest hits during the fight, and we also get another You Can Leave. You can leave! Which I, for one, will never get tired of. Meredith implies that she is karma personified, and I look forward to her being proven wrong. Then Lisa and Meredith meet up at the Mint Facial to get their skin analyzed. We find out that Lisa Barlow got kicked out of a tanning salon. I'm banned from them because the girl wouldn't let me tan. I went in and I was like, hey, I have an event tomorrow. I need to tan. It escalated. Let me tan and forbidden from returning. Lisa's jogging suit interview look is very cute. And I like Meredith's jumpsuit during this scene as well. We establish that Lisa is having a ski themed event. Après soirée, no ski. And that she's inviting everyone for the sake of group harmony. And then there's all of that kid chat. I won't bore you with a recap of that. Then Monica meets an overdressed Whitney at the bar. Whitney's top is so weird. It's like an open front sweater with a matching sweater bra. We establish that they're both going to Lisa's party and then Whitney has a very uncomfortable conversation with her coworker Monica about their work trip to Palm Springs. It's under the guise of the show but it's Whitney coming for Monica and I approve. She basically tells her that she sees her lack of loyalty and her temper and she doesn't like it. Monica is not receptive to this feedback and just kisses Meredith's ass and shows no loyalty to Angie. Whitney doesn't fall for this and really really calls Monica out on all of her poor behavior. She also warns her very clearly about Meredith. You know, I kind of dismiss Whitney, but she's actually having a lot of insight this season. And I'm really enjoying her holding Monica accountable in such a clean way. Maybe I'll do her the favor of learning her husband's name. And her husband's name is Justin. We are having a family scene next. I'm gonna fast forward. Like, I want overpriced purses and conflicts about exposing the husband you know what? You want me to go there with her husband? I can go there. And who barfed on my leg? And who won't do drag makeup? I don't need this. I don't need this. Somebody rescue me quick. Now we're at Angie's house for a card game. Her white carpet choice is incredibly brave, especially with a kid and a dog. Brave. You're very brave, Angie K. Moving on to Heather, we get another family scene. This might end up being the shortest recap this season. I can't believe I wasted another outfit. She's going skiing with her daughters and they've been facing bullying because of her book, Bad Mormon. It sounds like it might be a little harsher than normal high school stuff, but it also sounds like her daughters are incredibly balanced about it. Let's move on. Finally, an event for adults. Apre Vida. There's a crepe station. There's a shot ski. There's a champagne tower, there's a healthy buffet, there's a bar, multiple seating areas, a raw seafood bar, an ice luge. Lisa's dressed for her event in a jean jacket with matching pants, but the pants are like jean chaps. It's so strange and she's distracting from that or adding to it with a big chinchilla fur jacket. I really hope I can find footage of this to insert when I'm editing because it's it's an amazing, it like, it's a, it's a look. It's a, it was deliberate. Yeah, and all the ladies are in outrageous fur coats and over the top puffers and capes, except for Monica, who arrives in a blazer with a tube top underneath. 
Meredith is wearing head to toe Valentino. Angie is wearing a Fendi jumpsuit. They have to be dressed like that just to troll Monica, right? I would. Well, I'm like, you're the one that's triggered. <laughs> Lisa confronts Monica about their conflicts in Palm Springs and takes particular umbrage with the piece of shit comment. Totally fair. And she's really laid back in her delivery to Monica too. Like really laid back. Monica gets totally defensive, starts mocking Lisa. This is not going Going well. She should have just said like, Lisa, I'm sorry. Can we just start over? And I think Lisa would have started over with her, but instead she's going to die on insecurity hill and cling to some long ago phone call about Snoop Dogg's private jet. What? What? This seems like a weird thing for Monica to assert. I do love the mental image though of Heather hanging out with a dog father. That's a great, that would be a fun party. Oh no, Mary Cosby appears. She's wearing what looks like a quilted, comforter fashioned into a jacket. It has the texture of a Rolls Royce seat. It's tufted. The skirt is literally strips of puffer jacket sewn together with big gaps in between. I presume it was incredibly expensive and is full of hours of hand sewn work. And you know, ultimately I'm happy that she's keeping artisans employed. Sometimes I feel like Mary should employ a stylist, but then we get wacky moments like this. And I think, no, she shouldn't. Of course she spends her valuable time at the party, not participating and judging everyone else. Lisa, Heather, Angie, and Monica are now all standing in a circle shouting about how they feel that the other party is wrong to them. They are all holding crepes. Heather is describing her crepe, which has both sweet and savory elements. Lisa is yelling at Monica for calling her a liar. Monica is insisting that Lisa did, in fact, talk about missing out on a private jet with Snoop Dogg. And she is telling Monica to zip it and playfully tries to put a cylindrical cookie called a pyroline into Monica's pie hole. And then things just really, really escalate. Monica threatens to open up Pandora's box on Angie and Lisa, like a good friend, jumps to her defense and lets Monica know that that was rude. Suddenly we are in a finger in the face showdown and I am so ready for wig snatching and glass smashing. Inexplicably, the Lisa Monica fight moves to a booth with Whitney right in between them and Angie next to Lisa. They've calmed down quite a bit and I feel like there's a chunk of this particular fight not being shown. Suddenly they're hugging it out. We do get a great shot of Lisa's absurd denim thong chap pants. I'm noticing Angie referring to Greek things and doing the whole opa thing a lot. Is Utah Angie trying to be too Greek as New Jersey Teresa is too Italian? Hmm. We'll need to keep an eye out for her cookbook. Mary telling Monica that she eats too much and needs to watch out from gaining weight and not to eat her life away is like so gross. I can't believe that she said this and Monica doesn't respond at all. Monica just laughs it off. Mary has just called her fat in a derogatory way and she's just ignoring it. This is amazing. I am totally baffled by this. In any other franchise, the things that Mary says and does would become a point of contention for a full season. They all seem to disregard Mary or treat her with kid gloves, like she's an ill toddler or a delusional teenager. As the season moves forward, maybe we'll figure this out, but her presence so far in the series and how she interacts with the other ladies is just not logical at all. She is sitting in the middle of a room at a party and just shouting insults at everyone. What made you wear that necklace? I am amazed. I'm standing totally behind missed it. missed it on that one. Monica and Meredith get together to bash the most important person in their life, Angie K. They are aghast that Angie K tried to force a pyroline into Monica's mouth. This is the same group that had zero problem with Jen Shaw dumping a full beverage all over a freshly glam squatted Angie K. So it's just ridiculous. I don't know what the big deal is. Whitney pulls Monica off to the side after instigating a Shotsky that Mary declines to participate in. Whitney thinks that they have to tell Angie Kay what is being said about her marriage specifically by Meredith. Whitney says that she wants to be a good friend to Angie Kay, and I couldn't agree more. I think that Whitney is entirely correct and sharing this vital information in the middle of a packed event is the way to go. I also think that Whitney is kind of brilliant to back Monica into this corner. She's damned if she does and damned if she doesn't. 
And either way, it's a huge hassle. But before Whitney walks Monica through that door, she pumps her for information about these rumors. You're married to your husband. And Monica finally says it out loud. The rumors are that Angie K's husband is a homo. Shocking that a small conservative town would have rumors that the male hairdresser is gay. Like, this is not groundbreaking. I love that Whitney breaks it all down in her talking head and ultimately holds Meredith responsible for the drivel coming out of Monica's mouth before sticking some Vita tequila into Angie's mouth. It's like milking a cow. And letting her in on the secrets that are swirling around Salt Lake City. We gotta talk to you. And of course, Monica says it in the crudest way she can. That Sean Men. And the episode ends with Angie K flying across the room to corner Meredith and get to the bottom of these salacious rumors. She's spreading rumors about my marriage. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your eyeballs on my channel. I read all of your comments and try to respond to them. And I really, really appreciate your likes. Thank you, thank you, thank you if you made it to the end. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. You can leave. Here we are. Each before beauty coach cheese.